Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to show you what I think is the future of the Halo franchise. Now, of course we do have Halo Infinite, but Infinite ain't exactly doing too hot right now. But you know what is hot? And what keeps on getting even hotter? MCC's mod scene. With 343 fully embracing mod support with MCC, with plans to deliver proper mod tools for each game down the line, and also eventually add Steam Workshop support as well, I think MCC is destined to become Halo's very own version of Gmod. Handing MCC a collection of legacy games over to the community to do with what they please is a fantastic move that ensures that these fan-favorite beloved games will last forever. I mean, just look at Counter-Strike, Gmod, Left 4 Dead, World at War, Pack Ops 3, etc, etc. Just a few of the games that have had this treatment that have subsequently gone on to long outlive their officially supported lifespans. It's like live service, except it's free, doesn't require any developer resources, and the updates and content drops are not only far more frequent, but they're also far more varied. So today, we're checking back in with the MCC mod community to see what they've been up to since my last MCC modding video. Spoiler, they've been up to a lot. The mod community continue to blow me away with their creations, and I'm sure that some of the stuff that I'm gonna show off today is gonna blow you away too. As always, links to go and download the mods, where applicable, or to their creators, if no download is available, can be found in the description. I highly recommend that you check out every single mod featured in this video. Trust me, there's a reason it's been featured. So, let's waste no more time and take a look at the future of Halo. Starting off, let's get right into the mods with an absolute banger of a mod that offers something Halo fans have practically begged for now since 2009. This is Frontier by Green Knight. This is easily one of the coolest Halo mods ever made and it's still in development. Green Knight has ported tons of vehicles from both Halo Wars 1 and Halo Wars 2 over to Halo 3 and not just made them functional, but actually fun to use against each other. Now, just to list a few of them off, we have the Vampire, the Locust, the Cobra, the Hawk, the Grunt Goblin, the Marauder, the Banished Banshee, the Banished Ghost, the Jackrabbit, and more. All usable, all drivable. They're on his custom BTV map right now that's called Frontier, which honestly feels like a Halo Wars map that's been converted straight up into a Halo 3 BTB map. I mean, it's even complete with the Covenant and UNSC bases from Halo Wars for each team. Seeing both teams roll out in Halo Wars vehicles in Halo 3 at the start of the game really makes you feel like you're playing a Halo Wars sized battle, but in a first person shooter game. Hell, there's even a Retriever Sentinel that comes out of the floor near the start of the game and just starts flying across the map. A full-size Retriever, may I add. This bad boy is huge. Honestly, if you can get enough people together for a full-size BTB lobby, you've got to give this mod a try. But even if you can't, just download it and play around with the vehicles because they're so cool. Right then, this next mod is very much a work in progress, but I couldn't make a mod video and not show it off. So, before we look at it, just some backstory real quick. During Halo 3's development, Bungie had to cut a level from the campaign that was meant to take place between the Ark and the Covenant. This level was the Fable Guardian Forest, which was where we originally were meant to fight the now iconic Guardian Sentinel that Infinite finally canonized. It was meant to be a boss fight that took place in this massive, mysterious forest. It's also where the map Guardian takes place. That map is the only leftover remnant of the cut Guardian forest level in Halo 3. However, not anymore. I present to you, Spaced Zed's Guardian Forest Remake. Now, this map sadly isn't playable just yet, and like I said, it's very much a work in progress. This is a real passion project of Zed, so he wants to make sure that he gets it right before he releases it. But I gotta say, so far, this level is looking absolutely fantastic. Based on the very little official information that we know about Guardian Forest, this recreation seems like it's absolutely nailed its atmosphere as a mysterious and daunting forest with gigantic foreigner structures protruding from the greenery and the trees, some even dilapidated and gone to ruin with time, and the skies packed full of sentinels going about their duties. It just 
feels so quintessentially Halo 3, an alien forest lost and forgotten to time. It's just like it could slot perfectly into the existing campaign, and yet it's fan-made. I highly recommend you go and check out Zed's videos on the map and drop him a sub, and you bet that as soon as he releases this map, I'll be playing this beauty for a video, because man, I've wanted to play Guardian Forest ever since I first found out about it, and what was meant to be in the level, and the fact that it might actually be a possibility soon is so exciting. Next up, we have one of the most Herculean efforts I think I've ever seen for any game's modding community ever. This is Halo Combat Evolved in Halo 3 by Kashira. Now, this is a fantastic work in progress, again, work in progress remake of the entirety of Halo Combat Evolved. Yes, the entirety of that game in Halo 3's engine. We never got a proper Halo Combat Evolved anniversary, so Kashira took it upon herself to just make it herself. Her plan is to remake every single element of Combat Evolved in Halo 3's engine, but obviously that's going to take a lot of time and work. As for the campaign, right now, it's just the truth and reconciliation, but it's a fantastic proof of concept and taste of what's to come. Playing through Truth and Rec in Halo 3's graphics and lighting engine, but with Combat Evolved music, animations, weapons, encounters, dialogue, and more is honestly surreal. The quality of this remake is frankly incredible. It literally feels like a modernized Combat Evolved that still manages to retain its original aesthetic, but feels more modern in a way that doesn't disrespect the original. It's also a testament to just how incredible Halo 3's lighting engine still is today in 2022. I mean, the fact that it can make models and assets from 2001 look this good is frankly mind-blowing. Playing through Truth and Reconciliation with a few Halo 3 mechanics laced into the gameplay is kind of like Uncanny Valley, but in the best way possible. You need to try this mod out that Kashira has done an incredible job on. Honestly, I can't wait to see the future of this mod. But that's not all. Like I said, the plan is to recreate the entirety of CE, and that means multiplayer as well. And multiplayer is actually a lot further along than campaign is. She's managed to recreate almost the entirety of Combat Evolved multiplayer in Halo 3's engine already, finally giving this masterpiece of a game its first proper multiplayer remaster. Now, I've not actually had a chance to play this one with other people yet, but I've watched a lot of gameplay of it, and honestly, it looks just like her campaign project. Incredible. As it stands now, every single Combat Evolved multiplayer map, all 19 of them, have been remade one-to-one -one in Halo 3. Remade or ported, I'm not actually sure which one it is, but they're there in Halo 3, and they retain their exact aesthetic of their original counterparts, just making use of Halo 3's superior textures and lighting. She's also brought over the weapons and vehicles as well, and the gameplay is as close to C as it can possibly be, while still being in Halo 3's engine. I mean, look at this. There's even playable elites for Christ's sake, and not just any elites, Halo 1 elites. Like, this is insane, and this is where I've got to also give a shout out to the VKMT team and also Chunky Bean for their work on both the HD Halo 1 Elites and the Combat Evolved Plus Master Chief port, respectively, that are both used in this mod. The Elites look absolutely stellar, and so do the Spartans. The definitive CE Mark V and Halo 3's lighting engine with HD textures is just chef's kiss. Oh, and as if that wasn't already somehow enough, this mod also comes with the original Halo 3 menu as well, functioning in MCC. I mean, need I say any more? Kashira is doing insane work here. Please go and check her mods out ASAP. Right then, while you're still blinded, paralyzed, and I hope dumbstruck as well by the majesty of Halo CE in Halo 3's engine, a quick word from today's sponsor. Audible. You know the drill by now, there is no greater repository of Halo lore and knowledge in this galaxy or the next than Audible. There's lore here to suit everybody's tastes, from the deep, dark history of the Foreigners, Ancient Humanity, the Flood and the Precursors in the Foreign Trilogy, to Chief and Blue Team's return to Reach prior to Infinite in Shadows of Reach, a mysterious exploration of Zeta Halo pre-Infinite in Point of Light, an update on the War on the Ark and the Spirit of Fire crew in Divine Wind, and more. 
Audible is perfect for soaking in all this juicy lore whilst working, traveling, working out, or, as you can see, the way that I use it, while staying efficient in the medieval point-and-click browser game that I've been playing since I was seven years old, and I'm 25 and I've still not stopped. Anyway, <laughs> the best bit about Audible is that as a member, you get one credit every month that you can use to redeem for any audiobook in their premium collection. Which means that, long story short, you can literally get one free Halo audiobook every month. And new members can try Audible for free for 30 days. Just head on over to audible.com slash hiddenxperia or text hiddenxperia to 500 500. That's audible.com slash hiddenxperia or text hiddenxperia to 500 500 to become the sponge to the Halo Laws water. <laughs> that is quite possibly the weirdest analogy that I've ever made. Okay, moving on, I now want to take a look at a few custom Halo 3 multiplayer maps because the quality of these is absolutely insane. Starting out, we have Homefront by The Grim Dealer. Homefront is a really cool mid-sized Halo 3 BTB map that's made almost entirely using ODST assets. As you'd expect, it's set in a rainy new Mombasa and it's just one of those custom maps that when you play it and you have a walk around it, it just feels 100% developer made. So much so that it's got me questioning why Bungie didn't make anything like this for the mythic map pack that launched with ODST back in 2009. It's kinda crazy that they didn't. The layout of the map feels like a really condensed version of like the entirety of Mombasa streets. Like they've taken all the like main sections of Mombasa streets and kind of compacted them down into a mid-sized BTB map. There's even a carrier above the city and a phantom that seems to dynamically fly through the map between the buildings with its searchlight on. This has got to be one of the most immersive Halo multiplayer maps I think I've ever seen. It's not a massive map by any means, I'd say maybe like two thirds the size of Last Resort at, at best, and its layout is kind of similar to Rat's Nest in that the vehicle play spaces kind of surround and very occasionally intersect with the kind of close quarters boots on the ground combat areas that flow through the middle. I gotta say, the chopper on this map feels even meaner because of how tight many of the areas are that you can take it through. It makes it feel really intimidating and aggressive. Overall, this is a really, really sick map that I seriously hope 343 consider putting in matchmaking. Next up, we have Neckbeard Bee's Sanctuary. And this is one of those maps that when I first booted it up and saw it load in, I was legitimately taken aback by how gorgeous it was. Again, it's another custom map that is easily in parity with developer-made maps. It's a one-to-one -one recreation of Halo 2's iconic Sanctuary for Halo 3 one of the greatest competitive 4v4 maps in video game history. Now, from what I can tell, the Geo is identical to the original Sanctuary with all the sight lines and jumps still in place, but in my opinion, where this map absolutely shines above the original is its aesthetic. In this sense, it kind of feels like an upgraded version of Halo 2 Sanctuary. It has such a lost and forgotten foreigner aesthetic to it. It feels like the kind of place that Indiana Jones would stumble upon if he found himself on a foreigner world 600 years in the future. It's like a lost temple in the middle of a vast jungle. One side of the map is overshadowed by these mysterious and rather imposing foreigner obelisks, and then the other side is overshadowed by a great natural waterfall. I love that clash of natural with artificial, it's very traditionally foreigner. And then the centre of the map, like the OG Sanctuary, feels deeply religious. I love the use of the sandbox exclusive forge items, but this time in a jungle, not a desert. This aesthetic is absolutely bang on. Neckbeard's even gone as far as making sure one of the bases is still falling into ruin. Just some great attention to detail there. I can honestly recommend downloading this map, even if you aren't going to properly play on it. Just purely so you can walk around it on your own in a custom game, and just soak in the atmosphere. It's absolutely a worthwhile experience. And then we have Neckbeard's other Halo 2 remake in Halo 3, which is none other than the legendary Lockout. Yet again, another one of the best and most iconic 4v4 competitive maps of all time. And once again, this remake is absolutely stellar. 
Just like Sanctuary, the theming, layout, and even trick jumps are pretty much all the same as their Halo 2 counterparts, but the map itself is remade with Halo 3 textures, assets, lighting, and all that good stuff. It's actually built in the same environment as Narrows, which I think is really cool. You can even see, if you look off into the distance, one of the other Narrows bridges. Like, I love little elements of consistency like that. It's great for world building. Even though this is a, not a canon map by any means, that little element of world building is really nice. I gotta say, I love how much more grand and significant this high-tech flood containment facility feels when it's built with Halo 3's foreigner aesthetic. It really suits it. I also dig how in the flood sample hallway, the door that's been breached actually looks like something's escaped it now. Very, very cool touch. Just like with Sanctuary, I highly recommend just checking out this mod for no other reason than to just walk around it and soak up the atmosphere. It's absolutely exquisite. Right then, so you guys know how much of a Zombies fan I am, slash used to be, slash still am to a degree. For a long, long time, I've wanted to see a COD Zombies-esque mode in Halo with the Flood. And this next mod is the first stepping stone to that dream. I present to you the Raygun in Halo 3. The Raygun. Not gonna lie, if he'd showed me this clip in 2009, <laughs> I think my 12-year-old brain would have exploded. Perception, the maker of this masterpiece, is doing a damn fine job with it. He's ported not just the model, but also the animations and sound effects from Black Ops 2's Raygun into Halo 3, and although it's very much still a work in progress, it's looking really good. You know what this mod needs to go alongside it? A Halo 3 remake of Nacta and Toten as a foreigner facility that's under attack by the Flood with a functioning COD Zombies style game mode. If anyone out there with modding abilities is watching this video, right, I'm begging you right now, make 12 year old me's dream come true and make that experience, please. Continuing on with weapon mods, we have a very iconic one indeed. Lightsabers by Mythic Jackie. Yep, you heard me right. These are actual lightsabers in Halo, both a blue one and a red one that I think seem to work slightly differently, although I couldn't quite tell. I gotta say, as both a lifelong Halo fan and also coming off the back of Kenobi's finale, using a lightsaber, in particular a blue one, against the Flood is as expected to be fair, incredibly satisfying. This is one of those things that I can imagine seeing in like a, a fake troll YouTube video from 2008 that's got it photoshopped really badly into a 240p Halo 3 clip. That era was something different, but the fact that things that you would expect to see in that era are now actually possible is crazy to me. I still can't believe this stuff is possible. But lightsabers aren't all the things in this mod. There's actually tons of other custom weapons as well. We've got the legendary MA5K, the saw in Halo 3, the Halo 2 anniversary machine gun turret, the reach shotgun, and more. This is a really cool mod just to play around with, so highly recommend you check it out. Right, staying on the Star Wars theme, this next mod is absolutely effing incredible. Prepare yourself. If you're a fan of OG Battlefront 2, then you are going to love this. This is Geonosis by Abyssquick. Just like the simulation. This is a full port of the iconic Geonosis map from Battlefront 2, complete with textures, clones, weapons, vehicles, and even command points. Yeah, yeah, that's right! The fact that you play as an actual clone trooper in this mod in Halo 3 is so, so sick. But then you realize that that's not all. You can use the blasters that look, sound, and even have the same crosshairs as their OG counterparts. And then you realize that you can pilot the TX-130 tank, the Hailfire droid, the hover tank, the land speeder, that sonic turret thing that the Geonosians used, and even more. This mod is, as many of the others are, still a work in progress, however, and Abyss is working on adding the Juggernaut, the ATTE, and the iconic LAAT dropship as well, which will no doubt be incredible. One recommendation if you can get a BTB lobby going for this mod, make sure you try territories on it. Trust me, uh, it's not my favorite game type either. However, if you play it on this mod, you'll be treated to a very nice surprise. Like. 
This mod is absolutely incredible, and it's one of those perfect proof of concepts that prove the insane things that are possible when you hand your game over to the community. This right here is why mod tools were such an important addition for MCC, and I'm so thankful that this stuff is possible now. Next up, we have Ultimate Firefight on Sand Trap by Gnade Massacre 117. Now, this really is the ultimate firefight experience. The amount of content packed into this mod is, quite frankly, wild. There are tons of weapons from pretty much every Halo game under the sun. There are some entirely custom weapons. There are Covenant, there's Banish, there's Sentinels, there's Prometheans, there's Insurrectionists, there's Hero Allies that you can revive if they go down, there are ODST Allies, Marines, Spartan 4s, Spartan 3s, and so on. Like I said, this really is the ultimate firefight experience. Come on, I'll lead you up. Starting out, the intro itself is really, really cool, as you can see, and it's also the respawn kind of animation as well, as are the spectacle moments in the, that play throughout the mission as well, like, for example, the mantle's approach arriving. That is kind of surreal seeing that happen on a sand trap. You can really tell that there was a lot of effort made with this mod to make moments like this feel cinematic. Now, if I were to sit here and go through every single weapon in this mod, frankly, I'd be here for hours upon hours on end. But to cut it short, there are weapons, like I said, from pretty much every Halo game, from 1 to 5 at least. There's pretty much weapons from every single faction as well, even ones that weren't in Halo 3. And all the weapons seem to have some kind of official and also custom variants as well. And all of them function really well in Halo 3 against all these regular and custom enemies. There are also custom vehicles as well, with the most interesting hands down being the custom Promethean vehicle, the name of which I can't quite remember. Now, this thing is weird, but I think that kind of gives it charm. It's also really powerful as well, so definitely give it a shot if you try this mod out. Every few waves, a pelican comes in and drops off some allies that get better and more powerful the higher the round you get. They go from Marines to ODSTs to Spartan 4s and Spartan 3s, and that's as far as I got. These are really cool to fight alongside, as are the heroes as well that, like I said earlier, you can revive. Honestly, this is one of those mods that just has so much content in it that I can't even begin to break all of it down, so definitely go and try it out for yourself and see what you can find. This next mod by Control alt delete is the most early 2000s thing Halo has seen since Halo 1. This is Halo 3 skateboarding. Now, ever since playing Ride and Skateboarding in MGS2, I've wondered what Halo skateboarding would be like, or rather, Master Chief skateboarding, and well, now I know. I've got to say, it's actually quite sick that he's managed to get not only skating and ollieing to work, but also grinding in Halo 3's engine. It's pretty wild. You know, if it weren't for copyright, I'd be blasting some Blink-182 in the background right now. Master Chief Skateboarding isn't out quite yet, but make sure you go and follow Control or Delete so you know when it's time to send the Covenant back their gnarly bum. Now, this next mod is really cool. This is Mombasa Slayer by Rejected Shotgun. It's a super work in progress mod, very early on development, but it's also a really cool one that I've just got to show off. Much like Homefront that we looked at earlier on, this kind of thing is something that I cannot believe Bungie didn't do for ODST back in the day. It just seems like a no brainer. It's regular Team Slayer, but on the entire Mombasa Streets map, yes, the entire map, so it plays rather differently to your standard Team Slayer game. You also all play as actual ODSTs with ODST level health, movement, and grenade physics as well. When I played it, I found that both teams tended to really stick together, like true ODST style. It's funny how that translates over from the ODST campaign experience to this custom multiplayer experience, and I found that everyone kind of hunted through the city as a pack, which really felt immersive. Granted, the team fights that this causes when you run into the enemy team tend to be <laughs> a little bit messy, but they're fun nonetheless. But easily the highlight of this mod is its spawn mechanic, which might sound crazy, but just hear me out. You spawn in the drop pod bay that ODST's campaign begins in, a room that you can now fully walk around and explore. And the way that you get down to the surface is exactly what you'd expect. You hop in a drop pod at your own leisure, mind you, and jump feet first into hell alongside your team. 
or if you're feeling adventurous or crazy, one or the other, you can also just jump out the frigate and let gravity do its thing, but I have a feeling this will be patched in the final version of the mod. This is without a doubt probably the most immersive Halo multiplayer experience that I've ever had to date, and I can't wait to see the final finished version. Right, this next one is like, uh, I have no words for what this is, so <laughs> prepare yourself. So recently, General Heed scanned his entire body and turned it into a 3D model and then imported that model into Halo 3 and swapped it for Master Chief. And during a game night that I did with some of the modding community, he surprised us with this. This is General Heed Slayer and I mean, do I really need to explain what this mod is? Everyone plays as General Heed himself in third person. I mean, need I say anymore? I gotta say, playing this has made me realize how many ridiculous model swaps we're gonna start seeing now. I mean, there's God knows how many possibilities out there for really funny model swaps, but there's also an equal number of really cool model swaps that are possible as well. I mean, if anyone out there is watching this with the capabilities to do so, can you please try model swapping Chief and Arbiter with Snake and Raiden, please? Thank you very much. Okay, let's send this video out with a bang. This next mod is from the same team that bought you Halo SPV3. This is Halo Legacies. Now, before we dive into any of the details, let me just state that this is a very, very early in development mod. It is very work in progress right now. By the looks of it, not even like 15, 20% finished, so just bear that in mind. But this is Halo Legacies. What is it? It's a massive open world campaign and also multiplayer experience set on Gamma Halo shortly after Halo 3 in a world that is filled with multiple different biomes and tons of different points of interest that flow into one another seamlessly. Now, Legacies is an open world in the infinite sense of the word. Rather, it's a series of linear pathways that continuously branch out into other different pathways and into different areas and points of interest and locations before eventually reconvening, kind of like a web. A great example of this is that I was just randomly driving around in a warthog and casually I just stumbled upon waterworks from Halo 2 in a massive cavern. Then I found a bunch of secret foreigner hallways that were buried into cliff faces that led to more secret facilities in the cliffside. Then as I was driving around, I found a massive foreigner facility with a huge guardian floating above it. Although, as you can see, this area is incredibly work in progress, you can see here as well their idea of transitioning from one biome to another, going from this kind of alpine cliff face biome into a tropical biome by just going through a tunnel feels really seamless. They liken the approach to open world progression in this to something like Metroid or Tomb Raider, which I can absolutely see over the kind of infinite approach to open world. Now, given that it's set on a Halo ring, it's gonna have all your typical Halo ring installations, including flood research facilities that you can stumble upon in the open world. And given how they've designed the secret facilities so far that I've discovered and how they're discovered naturally in the open world, this will undoubtedly lead to some really cool kind of shock discovery moments. As of right now, they're building the mod in Halo 3's engine, but they plan to move it over to Halo 4's engine when 343 release mod tools for Halo 4. And I'm gonna assume that this is due to technical limitations with the game being open world, because needless to say, Halo 3's engine was not built for open world. Now, one of the coolest aspects of this mod is that it's almost like a celebration of community creations for Halo Custom Edition over the years. That game has had a long, long lifespan and so many cool things have come from it, and the dev team are honouring that in Legacies. The world is going to be full of various Custom Edition mods and assets and ports and things that were made for that game to both honour their legacy, which is why the mod is called Halo Legacies, and also to ensure that the mod experience is packed full of content without the devs having to work triple overtime to get all that content made fresh. I think this is a really smart move to both add a sense of familiarity to the mod and also ensure that there's a lot there to experience. But it's not just going to be a single player mod. They're also going to be using the open world for their own take on a PvE Battle Royale experience. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this BR mode, but one thing I will say that I think is really cool is that they plan to replace the kind of typical Battle Royale enclosing circle 
with weaponless flood forms that start to flow out of breach containment facilities. Very cool. The open world is also going to be acting as a forge canvas too, so they're really making sure they get a lot of use out of this big world. Now, like I said at the start, remember this mod is very, very early on in development. It's a very early work in progress, and it's no doubt going to be a Herculean task to get it all finished, but I really like the way that it's going so far, and I'm really excited to give it a try once it's done. And with that said, let's round this behemoth of a mod video out here. I hope you guys enjoyed the mods that I showed off. Like I said at the start, definitely go and check them all out and their creators. There's some fantastic stuff in this video. And also, there's tons of fantastic stuff out there that I didn't show off. Also, make sure you check out the Halo Mod Discord and also the Halo Nexus page as well to see if there's any mods there that take your fantasy that I didn't show off in this video. And with that said, let's round this one out here. I want to give a massive thank you to my amazing patrons for their continued support over there, as per usual. Thank you all so much, and thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you all in the next one.